Jackson Trio is the number two prospect in all of baseball and only being 19 years old, he has superstar written all over him. And that's why the Brewers have reached an agreement with him for the richest contract by a player yet to make his major league debut. So today we are gonna play that career of Jackson Trio, but this wheel right here is gonna make all the decisions for him. Every three years, we will spin this wheel and it's gonna change each time. If all of a sudden one team starts winning, it's gonna look a lot better to Jackson Trio. Maybe if the Brewers start struggling, he doesn't wanna resign there and instead, he wants to go sign with a big market team and secure the bag. These are some milestones we need to see us get to deem this as a successful career. We got 300 home runs, driving in 1,000 RBIs, 200 plus stolen bases, winning an MVP, and winning a World Series. Whether that be for a small market team like Milwaukee or he goes one to big dogs and wins one there. And then we got this trophy case here to put all his awards in. Hopefully it doesn't end up empty. Let's see where Jackson ends up playing in year one. It'd be pretty ironic if he signs that big contract and leaves right away. But no, instead he's going to get a plus two attribute boost to all his stats, which is pretty huge because his stats are kind of ass. That boost brought him up from a 69 overall all the way up to a 72. Pretty rough first half all the way around. We're 43 and 48, third place in the NL Central behind the Reds and the Cubs. Then Jackson just had a rough first half. 181 at bats. He only had two home runs. 52 strikeouts, a 193 average, 266 on base, 526 OPS, a 260 slugging percentage is horrendous, but he's only 19 years old. Gotta give him a couple years to get his feet settled. I don't think the second half can get much worse. Nope, nope, it still remained pretty bad. We went 79 and 83, finished in second place, but didn't make the playoffs. But Jackson's second half was slightly better. Still not good by any means, but he did improve, finishing with seven home runs, 35 RBIs, 79 strikeouts, so cut on that significantly, and 309 at bats, 223 average, 290 on base. 353 slugging and a 643 OPS, which of course isn't nearly enough to be in the top three for the rookie of the year rankings. And it looks like the Rangers defeat the Dodgers in the 2023 World Series. So just like real life, the Rangers win the World Series in 2023. So not making the playoffs and being back and forth between the starting lineup and the bench is definitely gonna play a role in Jackson Trio's decision to stay for the foreseeable future. He's a little bit frustrated. So now all of a sudden, some of those big market teams that have glaring needs in their lineup like the Giants and the Cubs are starting to look appealing to a 19 year old Jackson Trio. But hey, we still got two more years to convince him that Milwaukee is a great place to stay and the offseason starts by Shohei Otani going to the Dodgers. Oh man, and in offseason number one, we make a blockbuster deal by acquiring Bo Bichette for Bryce Terrain and Tyler Black. That is a huge boost to the lineup and we finally got a middle of the order back. So the Brewers this offseason went out and got a lot of young talent. Not only do we have Jackson Trio, but we acquired Bo Bichette from the Blue Jays. We still got Williams, still got Willie. We acquired Tamar Johnson, the best second base prospect from the Pirates. And then we also got Harry Ford, which is a big time power bat. Pitching rotation, we kept everybody. We got Corbin Burns still for one more year. Brandon Woodruff doesn't have an injury in MLB The Show. Freddie Peralta, Aaron Ashby, Eric Lauer. We're trying to win the division this year. Hey, we're chilling at the All-Star break at 4-9 and 41. First place in the NL Central. So it looks like our offseason moves are starting to pay off a little bit. Then Jackson's off to a decent start. He's already matched almost all of his statistics from year one and year two at the All-Star break. He's got more doubles at 12, as many home runs at seven, seven triples, 31 RBIs, 255 average. We got to get that on base percentage up, 431 slugging, 746 OPS. He's starting to come into his groove. He's still only 20. But look at all this bread on this team. Kristen Yelich had a really good first half. Self Relic in his first full year is having a really good season. Obichette's putting MV P type numbers up. Really love how this team's doing. Let's see if we can finish off strong and make the playoffs for the first time. MLB Sims are just a wild, wild place. Like, what the hell is this trade? They gave up Vlad Guerrero for a bag of peanuts. The second half did not go as well as I would have hoped, but we still went 87 and 75, finishing first place in the adult central by a long shot. Jackson Trio had a pretty solid season. He finished with nine home runs, 52 RBIs, 
267 average, 322 on base. The slugging's getting up there. 426, not bad. 748 OPS. So he's at least up to an average player, which may not seem like much, but he's already up to a 79 overall too, and that's just going to keep climbing. We faced the Giants in round one and swept them in two games, and now we got to play the juggernaut Los Angeles Dodgers. Game one, we end up losing one to seven. We really need to win game two. We can't fall behind 0-2, and we do just that, three to seven. Man, our pitching and our offense is laying us down, but we get on the board with a win, four to three. We got Brandon Woodruff's Dustin May here. And in this game, it looks like we didn't hit any home runs. Jackson Trio went two for six, though. He's hitting 380 this postseason. But Corbin Burns was pretty locked down, six and two thirds, three runs, four walks, eight Ks. We lose one more, we're done, and we do just that in a pitching duel. We lose zero to two. Brandon Woodard pitched seven excellent innings, only giving up one run and eight Ks. But Dustin May pitched a complete game, one hit, 10 strikeout performance. Let's see if the curse continues where whoever beats the Brewers wins the World Series, and it doesn't. It finally ends for the first time since 1980s. Jackson Chira once again has no awards in his second year. That's fine because he had a solid season. He's getting a lot of playing time, made the postseason. The Minnesota Twins signed Juan Soto this offseason. Brandon Woodruff ends up leaving us for the Padres on a four-year deal. We definitely could have afforded that. My God. Willie Adamas also leaves us for the White Sox on a five-year deal worth 55 mil. Another deal we could have done. So a lot of turnover on this team, but we still got Bo Bichette in the lineup. We feel that we still got all the young guys from our Johnson, Jackson Chirillo, Christian Yelich, Sal Freelick. Shortstop Bo Bichette just slides right on over from third base to short to cover for Willie. And we somehow re-signed Corbin Burns. Pretty ironic considering he just said there's almost no chance we're going to be able to keep him. We also ended up signing Michael Waka. So the pitching rotation, even though we had a lot of turnover this offseason, team's still not looking half bad. This is our final season before Jackson Trio has the decision of where he's going to play next season. So we really need to make a good impression on the young superstar here. Make a run in the playoffs. Him have a good season. Make offseason moves. Something to entice him to stay and that Milwaukee's trying to compete for the foreseeable future. First half, we're tied for first place with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Look at the Pirates finally making a run here. So that's a solid start. Trio, on the other hand, he's doing about as average as you possibly can do. Five home runs. He's got a 254 average, 314 on base, 408 slugging, 722 OPS. So it's significantly worse than what he put up last year. We need to start seeing that power go up. This guy has a ton of power potential. I think you also got to remember he is 21 years old. He'll continue to bring his age up, but there's going to be a lot of learning curves for the first couple of years, probably till he gets to like age 23, 24. Man, that's rough. We finished in third place behind the Pirates and the Reds. We were only two games out, and a lot of that had to do with our last 10. We finished three and seven, then the final 10 games while the Pirates went 8-2. and two. That's a big difference right there. You know what? Good for Pittsburgh. They deserve something to be happy about. They haven't had that in a while, and the Rangers win the World Series for the second time in three years, defeating the Braves. how Jackson end up finishing this season? He ended up hitting 270, 324, 460 OPS, having a career high in home runs, RBIs, walks, hits, play the most games, 139 games. This was his best season. It's a solid season, maybe slightly above average. And he's up to an 82 overall. So his potential, it's just keep going up. But now of course he has a decision to make. Does he want to re-sign Milwaukee? Or has one of the bigger market teams, the Rangers have won the World Series two times in three years. Does he want to go win? Or being 21, I know he just secured his MLB contract with the Brewers. Does he want to secure the bag and sign a mega deal with one of the big market teams like the Yankees? the Mets, the Phillies. But before we do that, let's just see what the offseason looks like. If we make the necessary moves, it could entice him to stay a little bit longer. And instead, we lose Devin Williams to the Padres. Yeah, he's gone. We lose Bo Bichette to the Rockies. Oh my God. And the Brewers just went on a complete rehaul. The lineup's still not looking bad. Self relics developed really nicely. Tamar Johnson, Jackson Trio, they're all looking really good. Still got good rotation with Corbin, Freddie, Ashby, Waka, Mats. Oh God, we signed Steven Mats. Gross. And our new closer is Sean Armstrong. So now we got to spin the wheel and see where he ends up going. But you can see the chances of that have significantly dwindled down. They haven't made the necessary moves to win a World Series the last two years. And let's see where Jackson Trio wants to play years four, five, 
and 6, and it looks like he's going to get another plus 2 stat attribute boost, so he is going to stay in Milwaukee. This brings him up to an 84 overall, and his stats are starting to look significantly better. All in all, he wanted to stay in Milwaukee. I'm telling you, man, Milwaukee's a great city. With how bad the NL Central is, it gives him a chance to win every single year. He likes it here, man. But if we plan on keeping him a third time around, we're going to have to start winning games and making deep runs in the playoffs. We haven't done that yet. So at the All-Star break, we are 48 and 42 not bad but we're still nine games behind the pittsburgh pirates he's got 25 doubles in the first half with five triples and eight home runs the power's starting to finally come 266 average 330 on base 446 slugging and a 776 ops he's on pace for his best season as a pro let's see if we can get him to 20 home runs this year one thing that's been weird about him is his speed tool is the loudest one that he has and so far in his career he only has 30 stolen bases and we're in his fourth season so he's not stealing as much as i thought he would and the second half, we spiral, going 83 and 79, not making the postseason. The Pirates won 108 games. What the hell am I seeing? The Pirates are led by Cabrian Hayes, Brian Reynolds, Ryan Mountcastle's their best new player. Paul Skeens has developed nicely, same with O'Neill Cruz, Henry Davis. Looks like their young talents just thriving. And then they got Joey Weimer, who had 11 homers this year. But Jackson Tree on the season in 587 at-bats had 16 home runs, 72 RBIs, and a 250 average. This also includes a career high in stolen bases with 11. He got caught eight times though. That's not good. 309 on base isn't great either. And then a 70-40 OPS. So he's starting to slowly come together. He had 42 doubles, eight triples, and 16 home runs combining for 66 extra bases. He's up to an 87 overall. He just keeps climbing, but he still won no award. So that trophy case is empty. And in year four, the Dodgers beat the Orioles in the 2026 World Series. Are the Dodgers ever going to fall off? And another domino falls for the Brewers in the rotation with Freddie Peralta signing a six-year, $107 million deal with the Braves. And then we're just blowing it up at this point. We traded for a relief pitcher and gave up Christian Yelich. I mean, I guess his contract's bad. He's old. We do spend money, though, signing Tyler Stevenson to a four-year, $59 million deal and also signing Lance McCullers. We're going out spending. I guess. Oh man, let's see what our lineup's looking like. Our three hitter is Josh Rojas. This is going to be a rough year. I mean, we got a lot of decent overalls. Our young players are developing. Freelix in 91, Mitchell's in 81. For some reason, they keep putting William Contreras on the bench. Then pitching wise, we are anchored by Corbin Burns, but after that, Gets a little different. Lance McCullers, Aaron Ashby, Griffin Canning, and Michael Waka. A whole lot of average after that. I don't know how this season's going to go, especially after the Pirates just won 108 games. They seem like they're legit. But we really only have this year and next year to prove to Jackson that we're trying to build a contending team for the foreseeable future. Feel like those big market teams are looking more and more enticing each year. And we're through five seasons at the All-Star break. And so far, Jackson's made zero All-Star appearances. Has zero awards in his trophy case. Man, and it seems like we got the same record every single year at the All-Star break. We're 48 and 44, second place in the NL Central behind the Reds this time. The Pirates won 108 games last year. They now have 37 at the All-Star break. Jackson's kind of having a career year so far, though. He's only played 87 games, and he's already tied his career high with 16 home runs he has 12 doubles four triples a lot of those doubles he hit last year are now going over the fence 252 average 313 on base 464 slugging and then a 778 ops we still haven't had an ops over 800 yet either man what a second half collapse we finished exactly at 500 81 and 81 fourth place in the NL Central. The Reds end up winning with 94. Cubs also make the postseason with 91 wins. And the Orioles beat the Braves in the 2027 World Series. This wheel is starting to look more and more different as each year goes by. He's starting to lose interest in Milwaukee, not being able to make the postseason for multiple seasons now. Watching the Braves constantly make it. The Orioles have a good young core. Some new teams on here. We got the Twins who are spending money. And the Dodgers are starting to look more and more enticing to him, living in the Southern California area, making a sh** ton of money and competing for a World Series, all have Jackson Trio's attention and has overtaken as the significant interest over the Milwaukee Brewers. And right now I'm telling you, man, it does not look good for the Milwaukee Brewers. And at the break, they're under 500 at 45 and 46, third in the NL Central, 10 and a half games behind the Pirates. And right now we're just running out a bunch of average. Jackson Trio up to a 92 overall. 
on pace for his best season yet with 25 home runs already at the All-Star break. I didn't even look at his stats for last season. He had 26 and he's in 266, 307 on base, 547 slugging, and then 854 OPS. Incredible first half for him. This man is doing everything he possibly and physically can to get the Brewers back to the postseason, but right now it's just not looking like it's enough. And we finish 82 and 80, not making the playoffs yet again. Jackson Trio, man, had an MVP caliber season. 41 doubles, 7 triple, 35 home runs, 131 RBIs, 15 stolen bases, 274 average, 326 on base, 532 slugging, and an 859 OPS. And Jackson Trio finally gets his first award, winning the National League MVP with his season over Pete Alonso of the Dodgers now and Corbin Carroll. So he wins MVP and an Outfield Silver Slugger Award. Hell of a season, still wasn't enough for us to make the playoffs, but a good year considering the decision that's about to be incoming. And the Dodgers win the World Series yet again, being the Yankees. And the Brewers are trying to do their best this offseason to keep Jackson around. They just went out and signed Tristan Cassis to a nine-year, $230 million deal, the richest in franchise history for a free agent. But then we let Sal Freelick walk to the Giants for $161 million. He hit 290 with 23 home runs last year. So now it's decision time. The two main teams on Jackson Trio are the Milwaukee Brewers. He just won an MVP with him, went out and spent big money to bring Tristan Cassis, but they also haven't made the postseason for what, three, four years in a row now? The other team is gonna be the Los Angeles Dodgers. Southern California is gonna entice him, a guy from Venezuela going over there, can offer him the most money, a chance to win the World Series every single year like they have done in the Sim so far. But you also got some other teams in there as well, like the Cubs who can offer a ton of money, the Rangers, the Giants have been looking for superstar forever even though they just signed Sal Free like maybe he wants to join his friend or he could get a plus two attribute boost for the third time in a row now where will Mr. Jackson Trio play his seventh eighth and nine MLB season and it looks like he is leaving Milwaukee to sign with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And this is a lineup that includes a developed CJ Abrams, an aging Shohei Otani, Jordan Alvarez, Pete Alonzo. I mean, hell, they got Mookie Betts, Eloy Jimenez, Jace Young, and Kyle Tucker all on their bench. And he joins his friend Garrett Mitchell. This explains why they've won the last like three World Series. And safe say he made a pretty damn good decision. The Dodgers at the All-Star break are 60 and 30 and first place in the NL West. Our man is rocking with 21 doubles, a triple, 15 home runs, 58 RBIs, a 291 band average, 367 on base percentage, 506 slugging, and an 873 OPS. And his former team, the Brewers, end up making the postseason at 87-75 as a wildcard team. And of course, the Dodgers end up winning the division with 92 wins, but not before the Padres made an epic come back. They kind of struggled in the second half. But before we start the postseason, we got to see how Jackson did in his first season. He's up to a 96 overall, had 86 runs, 26 home runs, 94 RBIs, 14 steals, and a 265 average. His on-base plus slugging percentage was at 800, so not as good as his MVP type season. No back-to-back -back MVPs for Jackson Trio, but Jordan Alvarez, his teammate, finished in second, 47 home runs. We ended up getting the one seed, securing a first round by, but next we played the Arizona Diamondbacks. See, first game, we end up losing two to seven. Damn, so we're off to a quick 0-1 start, but we come back, win that game seven to zero. How Jackson doing this one? Jackson Trio went one for four with a home run. Damn, a home run in his second postseason game. It's only a best of five. So game behind 2-1 is he not good. Oh my God, we lost zero to one here. The Diamondbacks can eliminate us here. We got Tony Goslin and Pablo Lopez. It'd be very disappointing to lose in the first round, but we end up winning two to one and we go to a pivotal game five. We're gonna quick manage this one just to see if we do. And we start out with a guy on second, nobody out. And then Diamondbacks get on the board by single with Corbin Carroll and get a one to zero lead after one. Jackson Trio with his first step at the game, 15 at bat so far this postseason he's only hitting 200 but he does have a home run and he hits a bomb right there to tie this game up we're in the bottom fourth inning here we got our big thumpers up starting with Jordan grounds out Pete Alonso pops up can Jackson Trio get us another run here no he ends up grounding out and it's one to one after four. Oh no a double by Moncada gives the Diamondbacks the lead in the 
fifth. Can we hold them? We do hold them, but now Diamondbacks are up two to one. The way our offense is playing right now, we can't afford to get behind by too many runs. Jesus Sanchez ties this game up with a solo blast too. Jordan gets a single too. We're starting to get some better at bats first. Brian Nelson, Peter Lonzo singles first and third. Nobody out with Jackson Trio up, and Jackson strikes out with nobody out. Got first third. They bring in Joe Ryan to pitch now. Can Tyler Black add on to the lead? He does with a base hit. Four to two. And a three run over by Chase Young. We are opening this thing up. It is seven to two now after a six run bottom of the six. But we strike out Corbin Carroll and we end up winning eight to four. Trio went one for four, including a big solo shot in the second inning to tie the game up. There's no way, man. The script writers are onto something. In the NLCS, we play Torrio's former team, the Milwaukee Brewers. Game one, we got Ryan Pepoit versus Corbin Burns, who has been almost un hittable so far this postseason. Game two, we got Gavin Stone versus Trevor Rogers. We're seeing all the young guys in the Dodgers rotation kind of step up this postseason. We win that one eight to seven. So back to back one run wins. We're up 2-0. We end up winning 4-2 to get 3-0. We are one away from advancing to the World Series. We got Dustin May, our ace, versus Aaron Ashby, who hasn't pitched at all this postseason. See if we can finish it off, get a clean sweep, and we do just that, winning 3-2. Jackson Trio leaves Milwaukee and instantly has an insane year, makes a shit ton of money, gets to live in Southern California, doesn't have to deal with Wisconsin winters, and he makes the World Series, and we go up against the Minnesota Twins. Game one, we end up winning 7-4 with John Schreiber gained the win. And Trio had himself a game, man. Two for five with four RBIs, a solo home run, and a double. Game two, we win that one 10 to six. Trio in this one with two for four, three RBIs, and two home runs. He has three home runs in two games. And after struggling against the D-backs in round one, we have now started eight wins in a row. We got right Papois against Matt Manning in game three, and we won that one five to four, extending the streak to nine. And now we got game number four, going for his first World Series reign. We got Tony Gosselin for Sean Doe. We're going to make things a little interesting. We're going to player lock on Jackson Trio and actually go in and play part of this game. Oh, we even get to play some defense on this. I've never done a player lock where I get to play defense. Hey, let's see the wheels. Let's see the wheels. Oh, we're under that. We're under that. Easy play for Mr. Trio. I mean, are they just going to have me feel routine fly balls out here? What's up with this? Oh, oh, that's in the gap somewhere. That's in the gap. Where is it? Give me that. Oh, he missed it. Oh, no. Okay, this is significantly harder than I thought. Our first at-bat with Jackson Trio, hitting 277, 984, five home runs, 10 RBIs in the 2029 postseason. Oh, we get a fastball. Get through. No, we roll over it to the shortstop and we ground out. Bat number two, he's five for 14, three home runs, seven RBIs in the World Series. And we do have a one to zero lead. And we add to it a perfect, perfect single to left field by Jackson Trio. First and second with nobody out. Oh, I'm fast as fuck, boy. And I very much messed up. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, I don't want to talk about that. At bat number three, we're one for two with the single so far. We're holding on to a two to zero lead. Lock closer. That ball smoked in the center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. It's three to zero. We are one out away from being World Series champions. And no better way. Oh, and it's caught. The Dodgers win the 2029 World Series. And Jackson Trio gets his first ring as an MLB player. I don't know how and I don't know why, but Jordan Alvarez actually won the World Series MVP, hitting 437 with three home runs, nine RBIs. Really good series. I think he just barely outplayed Jackson Trio. So, of course, his interest in staying with L.A. is just continuing to grow, and he has no interest in going back to the Brewers or re-signing with them anytime soon. And this is where the sim gets weird. The Dodgers trade a 35-year-old regressing Shohei Otani to the Padres, a division rival for Tyler O'Neill, who is also 34 years old. Man, how old is he? He's only 26 years old still. I'd be shocked if we didn't make the playoffs. So just for this one, I'm going to sim all the way through until the end of the regular season. And Jackson Chirillo in year eight finally makes his first all-star team and he's a 99 overall. He had 22 home runs and 71 RBIs in the first half. Regular season has come and go. And of course the Dodgers win the National League West, but only with 87 wins this time. 
Jackson hit 32 home runs, 113 RBIs, 11 stolen bases, 258 average, 327 on base, and an 824 OPS. He now has four straight seasons of 25 or more home runs. And the Twins beat the Cubs in the 2030 World Series. Twins going to back to back World Series. We are now in the final season before our third wheel spin, year nine of Jackson Trio's career. And I'm really happy with how the last four years have gone, especially after the first couple. Jackson made his second All Star team this year, has 19 home runs, 52 RBIs, 277 average. His best on base percentage, the eye is really improving at 366. He also has his best OPS at 895. But the Dodgers come in last place at 37 and 54. I don't think Jackson wants to go back into losing after getting his first taste of the World Series and making the postseason in back-to-back -back years. So all of a sudden, the Dodgers don't make the playoffs. That could play a huge role in his decision. And the Dodgers finished 525 games back and did not make the postseason. The Dodgers may have not done well this year, but Jackson Trio had his best season as a pro with 35 doubles, 7 triples, 40 home runs, 108 RBIs, 6-2 walks, most of his career, his eyes gained better with age, 279 average, 347 on base, and a 909 OPS. Somehow not finishing top three in MVP voting though, but he did win his second Silver Slugger award. You now notice that this wheel is considerably dense down with the Los Angeles Dodgers holding a huge portion of it. He's happy in LA, likes living in Southern California, won a World Series there, has won multiple awards, gives him a chance to win every single season, and there's really nobody from the crowd that has stood out. Twins have been good, Yankees have money, Cubs, that's really about it. So it's either that, a plus two upgrade, or you'll notice now we have Retire on here. He's going into his 10th season. If he wants to call it quits on a career early, he can do just that. He's won a World Series, won an MVP, multiple awards. Maybe it's time to hang up the cleats. But each time we spin this wheel, that retirement one will get considerably bigger. But now let's see where Jackson ends up playing. Does he go to a new team, stay with the Dodgers, or does he retire? It looks like he's going to stay a Los Angeles Dodgers for the next three years. He's developed really nicely there. He's up to a 99 overall. The Dodgers have money to spend, but they've let a lot of their young talent kind of age out here. Jordan's 34 now, but otherwise they got one other player who's a 90 overall in Dustin May. So they're starting to get up there. They're going to need to bring in some talent during this next three years. We were in last place at the All-Star break last year. Move it a year forward and we are in first place with 55 wins, seven games ahead of the D-backs. Jackson made the decision to re-sign here, and so far, he's having his best season as pro. He's considerably getting better each and every year. 27 home runs and 70 RBIs in only 88 games. He's also pushing a 300 ban average for the first time and a 933 OPS. Let's finish it off and see if he can keep it going over the next three months. And we do make the playoffs with 93 wins. We're two seed and have a first round bye. The Cubs secured the one seed. How are we looking? Tyler Black had 18 home runs this year. Jacob Berry, 22. Jordan, 15. He's starting to age out, man. Jackson Trio, 45 home runs, 116 RBIs, 16 stolen bases, almost a 2020 season, 282 average, and then 904 OPS. His stats have just been getting considerably better. And if you look at the statistics over the last six years, he's been one of the best players in all of baseball. But of course, he finishes second in the MVP voting behind Jose Tavares. He was literally a solo home run away from tying him for just about everything. I think average was the main difference here. But we add another Silver Slugger award to the trophy case. Looks like we played the New York Mets in the NLDS, and we start off game one losing 2-10. to 10. Not a good start, but we come back and win that one 9-8. Can't fall behind 2-1, and we don't. We win 3-2. We are one game away from advancing, and we do win that one 9-7. Jackson Trio clutched up when needed. 3-5 for five with 3 RBIs and 2. Ooh, home runs. And it looks like in the NLCS, we'll play the Chicago Cubs. It's a one seed versus a two seed. Kevin Stone versus Jeffrey Gutierrez in the first game. We lose that one seven to nine. These games are gonna be close. Dustin May versus Tim Sable in game two. We lose two to eight. We're down two to zero. Three to zero, man, what is going on? The Cubs are just kind of running away with this and we get swept in four games. And the White Sox defeat the Cubs in the 2032 World Series, an all Chicago World Series. Going into our 11th MLB season, we're still 98 overall, but we could start seeing some regression. We're 29, we'll be pushing 30 here soon. And Jackson Trio makes his fifth All-Star appearance, betting fourth in this one. 
See if Jackson can get another 40 home run season under his belt. And we didn't make the postseason this year. Oh man, we finished 83 and 79. Nine games back of the Rockies winning the division for the first time. But we did get another 40 home run season under our belt. Our third in a row, 46 home runs, career high. 127 RBIs, second most we've ever had. 265 average and an 872 OPS. We just keep getting better, man. We're about to hit our age 30 season though, so we could start to see a little bit of decline. But we did lead the National League in home runs by seven with 46 and tied for the league league with 127 RBIs. We made a huge comeback that second half to catch Miguel Vargas. And Jackson Trio somehow wins MVP over Miguel Vargas, winning his second MVP award, first with the Dodgers. And we just keep racking up these silver sluggers, so we can add that to the mantle as well. And the Reds defeat the Twins in the World Series. What a weird World Series. This is like the 2033 version of the Rangers versus the Diamondbacks. We are entering our 12th and final year before another wheel spin, and the Dodgers went out and spent to try and ensure that we sign. They went out and acquired Heston Kirstead, who is an 88 overall, but he's coming off a 38 home run campaign. They also had acquired Henry Davis, who was an 86 overall and also 34. So a little bit up there, but he is one of the better catchers in baseball right now, having an 824 OPS. And Jackson Trio this season will equip the 300 home run club and the 1,000 RBI mark so we can cross those off the board. And we made our sixth all-star appearance. We're coming off the bench though, kind of weird. We're down to a 97 overall. And we don't make the playoffs again. Only 82 wins. The Rockies win it back-to-back -back years. And the Athletics, by this time, they'll be the Las Vegas Athletics. But what the fuck? They defeat the Mets in the 2034 World Series. Now it's decision time for Jackson Trio. He likes LA, but he's seen the Cubs win too. That could be an enticing place to finish his career. And those are the only two teams he is interested in playing for. But he has now played 12 MLB seasons, multiple MVPs, World Series awards, 300 home runs, 1,000 RBIs. His chances of retiring have gone up significantly, and we're up to about 25% chance. Or, of course, we could just make him a little bit more OP and boost up his stats a little bit. But let's see what Jackson and Trio decides to do for his 13 through 15 season and he is going to leave the Los Angeles Dodgers and sign with the Chicago Cubs. But we do get to pair Jackson Trio, MLB Pipeline's number two prospect right now and their number one prospect Jackson Holiday for the future. The goal here is to gonna be get him another World Series ring. He only has one. Let's see if we can add one more to the mantle, get him two. And then if we got a third MVP with three different teams, that'd be pretty legit as well. Cubs are sitting at 60 and 31 at the All-Star break, having a hell of a first half. But right now, Jackson's having the worst season he's had in a while. He only has 18 home runs, 59 RPIs, still has an 814 OPS, but it's significantly down from the years he spent in LA. Maybe it's just LA, man. They're hitting factory. He goes there and he's hitting bombs. Man, with how well the first half went, we struggled mightily in the second half. We 93 games still, but the Reds ended up winning the division with 97 wins. Jackson Trio had the worst season he's had in a very long time, but it's still good. 26 home runs, 97 RBIs, about a 260 average, and a 784 OPS. It's not up to Jackson Trio standards. It's still a solid season, though. We ended up winning the first game versus Giants 9-2, and Jackson Trio had a three-run homer. Man, this guy just performs best in the postseason. And we went 4-0 to sweep the Giants, and we end up playing the Nationals and the NLDS. Game one, we lose 2-5. to five. Game two, we lose three to four, and we are one game away from elimination. And we win 11 to two. We need to win here to keep it going, and we don't. We lose one to five, and the Nationals advance to the NLCS. And the Orioles ended up beating the Nationals in the World Series. Year one in Chicago did not go as planned. This could have been a mistake. Yeah, note to self, never go to Chicago. We're in our 14th season, so now we're starting to see some players that are young now retire. Emmanuel Classe, Alex Diaz, Juan Duran. You got Will Hidamas retiring here. And Jackson's down to a 94 overall, so he is starting to regress a little bit. We're just going to sim the entire season just to see how we do. Jackson had 26 home runs, 93 RBIs, and 836 OPS. So a little bit better than last season, but it seems like he's starting to trend on the downward. Which, I mean, shit, if you're downwards hitting 26 home runs, almost 100 RBIs, and an 830 OPS, I'll take that all day. We make the postseason again. We play the Mets. We win game one, 1-0 one in a pitching duel. Can we finish off the sweep? We do just that, winning 4-3. to three. Now we get a rematch with the Nationals, who knocked us out early last year. We lose 3-4 to four in game one. 
We won this one. We do. We win 7-1. to one. We win in big-time fashion. How did Jackson do in this one? He ended up going 2-3 for three with two walks. I'm telling you, man. Performs best in the postseason. We lose 5-10 to 10 in Game 3. In Game 4, we lose 4-5. to five. So back-to-back -back years, the Washington Nationals knock us out of the playoffs. And the Angels defeated the Pirates in the World Series. These World Series results are getting wild. We are in our third and final season here in Chicago, and it's starting to look like more and more as we regress. We could consider retiring at this point, or we could leave to go somewhere else. The Cubs just haven't got it done for Jackson so far. Cubs finished the season at 82 and 80, fourth in the division, not making the playoffs for the first time. Jackson actually went up to a 96 overall, having a really good bounce back season 38 home runs. 108 RBIs, 272 average, and an 877 OPS. So really good season, even though it was a down year for the team. And he wins another Silver Slugger Award. And the Cardinals go on to beat the race in the World Series. But now it's decision time. He's 15 years in. He's done everything you possibly could do on a baseball field. Winning World Series, winning MVPs, having numbers that back up a Hall of Fame type career. So he could retire right now. Nobody would blame him. And you see, we got a just as equal chance of retiring as anything else on this board. Could resign with the Cubs, or the new one on here is he could go back to Milwaukee. Go back to the team that signed him, developed him, and that he thoroughly enjoyed playing. He won a World Series, he did what he wanted to do, and that was go to a big market team and win. He's done that, but now he might want to go back to Milwaukee and try to bring a World Series back to a city that drafted him. Alright, let's see what we end up doing here, man. This could be our final wheel spin and he does go back to the milwaukee brewers to possibly finish out his career and try to bring a world series to milwaukee and we start off by playing the team we stole him from the chicago cubs to see how we do here we lose the first game four to five on opening day Ugh. trio went 0 for three that game so not a good start for him game number two we lose that one two to four damn man are we really gonna leave chicago and get swept by him he went one for four on that one. A one for seven start on the season for Mr. Cheerio. And we lose one to eight. We just got swept by the Cubs. We leave the Cubs just to suck ass. And we went over for four on that one. A one for 11 series. Not a good start. At the All-Star break, we are in last place at 42 and 49. 12 and a half games behind. Having the worst season we've had in a while. Only 17 home runs, 50 RBIs, and a 239 average. What's our OPS down to? Our OPS is down to 797. It's still hovering around that 800 mark, though. But it's starting to look like if we wanted a chance to win, we probably should have stayed in Chicago or looked elsewhere. 77 and 85, not making the postseason. Yikes. Man, look at this playoff bracket for the NL, and look at the teams now and how they're doing. That's insane. Look at this NL playoff bracket and think of how the teams are constructed right now. That's kind of insane. Jackson Trio finished 25 home runs, 81 RBIs, a 795 OPS. So not bad. It's still very good numbers. But I'm doubting we won any awards or anything. Definitely didn't win MVP. Did we end up winning a Silver Slugger Award? It doesn't look like it. So our reign on that finally ended. What about Gold Glove? We really haven't won one, maybe one or two. No, we didn't win a gold glove either. And the Cardinals won the World Series against the Yankees. That's even more gross. Man, let's see what the hell this team's even looking like in 2038. We got Jackson Trio, and that's literally the only player on offense that I know. We're down to a 93 overall. We're still high overall, but we're regressing. Kind of scared to see what our pitcher rotation looks. We got Andrew Painter, and that's also all that I know. Year 17, man. We have made it 17 years, and we are close to 500 career home runs. I would have liked another World Series, another MVP. I can't bitch too much about what's happened so far. Especially considering the first five years of his career were just not that great. And we're also 15 years in the future, and the Brewers still have never won a World Series, so I have a lot to look forward to. Great. We finished 68 and 94 this year, our worst season yet. Jackson Trio finished with 32 home runs, 111 RBIs. An 893 OPS. It's always the years where the team does really, really bad, where he just seems to go off at this point, at least for the last handful of years. Finished tied for third in home runs with 32. RBIs wise, he finished in fourth with 111. Just missed out on the Silver Slugger Award. Did he finally win a gold glove? I won a gold glove with him, and he didn't win one of those either. The Cardinals win the World Series again versus the A's. Dude. The Cardinals can, like, chill. Year 18, we're still in 89 overall. What are our stats looking like? We need 24 home runs to reach 
500 for a career, and we're going to get with 1,600 RBIs. That's a damn good career, man, with an 823 OPS. The way this team's constructed, we are not going to win a lot of games. So let's just hope that Jackson has a good season before we have to spin the wheel again. We start out 2-11. All-star break, we are 38-52, and far and away the worst team in the NL Central. We are no longer the best player on the team. We're 86 overall. We have 16 home runs, 59 RBIs, and 248 with a 766 OPS. We need eight home runs for 500, though. If we can get to that, I'll be really happy. We finished 61 and 101, 42 games behind the Cardinals. God damn it, this is my worst nightmare. Jackson Trio finished with 22 home runs, two short of 500 throughout his career. So, man, if he decides to retire, I'm going to actually be kind of upset. 92 RBIs, 306 on base, not good, and a 719 OPS. He just didn't have it this year. And the Giants beat the A's in the World Series. Are the A's like a juggernaut now? What is this? Well, there you go, A's fans. 2040, you can start looking forward to making World Series. Now, we got our six wheel spin. 18 years in, really, we only got two options. We could re-sign with the Milwaukee Brewers and co 20 plus season. Seasons, get to 500 home runs or we can figure out we've made a shit ton of money we've won a world series one mvp ton of awards our trophy case is pretty full and we could walk off into the sunset and retire at like 35 years old but let's see what he ends up doing is he gonna retire is he gonna resend with the milwaukee brewers and it looks like jackson trio is going to retire Jackson Trio walks off into the sunset with 498 home runs, 1686 RBIs. He had 214 stolen bases, 264 average, 328 on base percentage, 490 slugging, and an 817 OPS for an 18 year career. He also won multiple Silver Sluggers awards, made 10 All-Star appearances, won a World Series, and won two MVP awards. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check this one out as well, where I reacted to mock trades seen on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it.